Today we will talk about compression therapy which includes flossing bands. Flossing tissues. Tissue flossing is a compression therapy technique that uses a latex rubber band to compress a joint or muscle group during passive or active mobilization. The technique is considered similar to blood flow restriction training, BFRT. Tissue floss is typically a simple, elastic latex band. Floss bands are much like a resistance bands but they are more durable and less extensible. Some common brand names are Rock Floss, Voodoo Floss, Serious Floss etc. They are usually wrapped around a particular joint or muscle group, much like how an ace bandage wrap might be applied. They are mostly popular among CrossFit athletes and bodybuilders. Now let's talk about the current clinical uses, which have the following indications. Mobility restrictions, voodoo flossing may be beneficial for individuals with restricted joint mobility, such as those with osteoarthritis, or muscle tightness, such as those with muscle pain. Pain management, voodoo flossing may also be useful for managing pain in individuals with conditions such as sprains, strains, or tendinopathies. Rehabilitation, as part of a rehabilitation program, Voodoo flossing may be used to help individuals recover from injuries and improve mobility. Sport performance. Voodoo flossing may also be used to improve sports performance by increasing range of motion and reducing pain. Adhesions. Voodoo flossing may be used to temporarily improve blood flow in the affected area. Now, let's talk about the current concepts on how tissue floss bands work. Basic theory. Tissue floss bands make use of the principles of compression and facial shearing to help muscles and joints become more flexible and pain-free. The theory on how tissue floss works was first proposed by Starrett and Cordoza in 2013. They suggested that there are two mechanisms underlying flossing. One facial shearing. Two blood flow restriction to the muscle. Facial shearing proposes that flossing can activate the mechanoreceptors in the deep facial layers. This activation may result in facial shearing, which restores the fascia's ability to slide, or it may cause reperfusion of the compressed tissue, improving blood flow. Applying compressive stress to restrict blood flow to the muscle. Tissue floss bands are typically wrapped around the problematic muscle or joint to apply an external pressure above or below it. This pressure does not affect the arterial inflow of blood, but restricts venous outflow distal to the site. By flossing your muscles, you are constricting blood flow to the compressed area. But as soon as you remove it, blood rushes to that area, flooding it with nutrients and oxygen. The theory is that by applying compression pressure to the area, you may help increase mobility, lessen pain, and hasten recovery. Put simply, tissue flossing delivers its benefits by improving communication between the nervous system and the affected muscle group or joint, Shearing and gliding of layers of skin and muscle fascia, and improving joint gliding. Possible neurophysiological effects of tissue flossing. Increased proprioceptive input to the brain. The use of floss bands is thought to boost proprioceptive signals to the brain by stimulating cutaneous mechanoreceptors, which in turn increases mobility and accelerates recovery. Stecco recognized the role of cutaneous mechanoreceptors. The authors suggested that the facial layers closest to the skin have a denser population of mechanoreceptors than layers deeper in the tissues. Stimulation of sensory receptors. Applying compressive stress to a muscle group may stimulate the nerve endings or sensory receptors present in the muscle tendon unit, MTU. These sensory receptors sense and detect any mechanical stimuli, or unusual changes within the MTU, and then relay that information to the CNS, 
via dorsal root of the spinal cord. These sensory receptors are also known as proprioceptors or mechanoreceptors. They are commonly found in the muscle fibers and Golgi tendon organ. Tissue flossing may influence muscle spindles. Muscle spindles are primary proprioceptors of the muscle. They can sense any changes in muscle length. When they sense compression of the muscle, they relay this message to the spinal cord via afferent nerve fibers. If the muscle spindles detect any abnormality, the spinal cord starts a defensive mechanism known as stretch reflex, which protects the muscle from straining. Tissue flossing may stimulate Golgi tendon proprioceptors. The Golgi tendon organ senses and relays information to the brain regarding the amount of tension the muscle is exerting. When a muscle exerts too much tension, it triggers a reflex response called autogenic inhibition reflex. By preventing the muscle from exerting more force, this reflex sets off a defense mechanism that relaxes the muscle. This prevents the muscle from hurting itself in practice. Tissue flossing may reduce pain through pain gate mechanism. This theoretical mechanism is based on the Melzack and Walls gate control theory of pain. This theory proposes that no susceptive alpha delta and C sensory fibers carry the pain stimuli to the dorsal horn and open the substantia gelatinosa layer, while non nociceptive alpha beta fibers close the layer by blocking alpha delta and C fibers. Tissue flossing is thought to influence the gate closing mechanism by stimulating the alpha beta fibers. Now let's talk about the clinical uses and benefits proposed benefits of tissue flossing. It may help in ease muscle stiffness, increase flexibility, lessen muscle soreness. Reduce pain, improve muscle mobility, increase joint ROM. Prevent injury, improve muscle recovery, reduce DOMS. Clinical uses of tissue flossing. Tissue flossing is used by many manual therapists and trainers as a part of numerous treatment protocols. Tissue flossing can reduce the sensation of tightness in an affected area, which may hasten the recovery of muscle soreness or flexibility. Reduction of delayed onset muscle soreness, DOMS. A clinical trial on university students published 2019 found that tissue flossing might help reduce exercise-induced DOMS. The study concluded that while slightly less effective than bold standard treatment, tissue flossing appeared to be a useful method for managing DOMS. Now we will study about the application of tissue flossing. This will explain how to use tissue floss bands properly. Consider using tissue flossing techniques to increase joint mobility, prior to exercise if you experience tightness, or have a specific mobility restriction. Do's and don'ts of tissue floss application. Do's. Target any body part with stiff joints and or tight muscles. Floss joints and muscles of the periphery such as the knees, triceps, lower leg, biceps, shoulders, ankles, elbows, and hamstrings. Don't. Use tissue flossing on neck or head. Floss anything part of the torso including the back, chest, spine, and abdomen. How to apply tissue floss. One always wraps securely. Ensure no contraindications to application prior to treatment. 2. Wrap with 50% overlap of previous loop. 3. Continue wrapping target area while adding tension, up to 50% to tolerance. 4. Finishing by tucking in the end. 5. Move joint or muscle through range of motion for no longer than 2 minutes. ROM exercise with tissue floss. 1. Wrap upper part of your arm or leg, tightness of 7 out of 10. 2. Should not feel any numbness or tingling. 
3. Move your arm or leg with light to moderate resistance, 30% of max. 4. Perform 3 sets of 20 reps, or to max effort, 30 seconds rest periods. Lastly, let's discuss the contraindication on the use of tissue floss bands. Don't wrap the band too tightly or leave it on for a long time. Don't leave the wrap on for more than a minute or two. Watch out for any tingling or numbness the wrap may cause. Stop using the band right away if you experience tingling, pain, or a throbbing soreness. Contact your healthcare provider or GP if pain or numbness does not go away in 5 minutes. Tissue floss may be contraindicated in those with pre-existing heart or blood clot conditions, e.g., deep vein thrombosis. Avoid using the bands if you are allergic to latex. Tissue floss may also be contraindicated in pregnancy. While it may be beneficial in certain conditions, there are some clinical contraindications to be considered before using this technique. Vascular issues, voodoo flossing can be contraindicated in individuals with peripheral arterial disease, varicose veins or deep vein thrombosis, as it may increase the risk of blood clotting. Sensory issues, individuals with decreased sensation in the area being treated, such as diabetic neuropathy, should not use this technique as it may increase the risk of injury. Open wounds or skin issues, open wounds, rashes, or other skin issues in the area being treated should be avoided as it may increase the risk of infection. Inflammation, voodoo flossing may be contraindicated in individuals with acute inflammation as it may further irritate the area. Fractures, compression flossing should not be used on an area where a fracture is suspected or present. Nerve impingements, compression flossing should not be used on an area where a nerve impingement is suspected or present. It is important to note that these contraindications are not exhaustive and the practitioner should evaluate the individual case and consider any other factors that may affect the safety of the technique. An individualized assessment should always be performed prior to the application of this technique.